Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. In case you're new here, my name's Jennifer. And all this week we've been doing a big cookie bankathon, and we are going to continue with that today. Today I'm going to be making some really delicious lemon cookies. I am going to go ahead and type out all the ingredients in the recipe description for you. I don't have an actual link to this recipe. This was a recipe that my dad has been making for years. Well, really, I've been making it for years. He was making it for years before I ever started making it, and I have no idea where he got the recipe. So I just have a handwritten card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave all the ingredients in the recipe description. So if you're interested in making these cookies, just go ahead and follow along with this video to get the process. And then when you want to actually go bake them, go ahead and head over to the video description and you'll find all the ingredients all typed out for you there. So for today, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm really excited about these cookies. These are definitely one of my family's favorites. So again today, just like in the previous cookie recipe that we made together, I'm making these cookies for a cookie swap, which means I'm going to be doubling the recipe to make sure I have enough. So if you're gonna make them yourself and you don't wanna double the recipe, go ahead and use half of everything that I'm using in this video. So we're going to start with a cup of butter. So I've got a cup of softened butter in this bowl. To this butter, we are going to add three cups of granulated sugar, and then we're going to cream that up together. Now, if you've been watching my kind of cookie bake then you know that the paddle attachment for my stand mixer has mysteriously disappeared. I think this is pretty much the worst timing imaginable to be without a stand mixer, but I am without a stand mixer. My new paddle attachment is supposed to finally come in the mail today, but it's going to come too late for me to make these cookies. So tomorrow I'll be making the last cookie recipe and there you'll finally get to see my stand mixer. For today, we're going to go ahead and use our hand mixer one more time. So once you get your softened butter and your sugar together in the bowl, you're gonna go ahead and beat those up just to cream it all together. I'm gonna go ahead and just give my mixer a little bit of help with this wooden spoon here. This mixer isn't really strong enough to handle creaming butter and sugar really well. So we'll give it a little bit of elbow grease, help it out. All right, so now that we've gotten our butter and sugar all creamed together, it'll look a little bit smoother if you use a stand mixer, but really just looking like this is good enough. So now that we have gotten that all creamed together, we're gonna go ahead and add our liquid ingredients to this bowl. First, we're going to need six eggs. I've gone ahead and already cracked the eggs and beaten them into this bowl here. Now, I pretty much always am in the habit of cracking my eggs into a separate container before adding them, rather than adding them directly into the recipe just because you never know when you might get a bad one and it would be a shame to waste all that delicious butter and sugar that we have there. The other reason I'm being a little bit extra cautious right now is because I have been using the eggs that we water glassed this summer and so far we have not had a single one that's bad. We've used probably a couple dozen and they've all been great so far, but just in case, because, you're, because you never know for sure, I have been a little extra cautious about adding those to a separate container before adding them into our food. Now to this mixture, we're going to add one cup of milk. Next, we're going to need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is really delicious homemade vanilla extract. And because I still have all the vanilla beans in here, it's kind of hard to measure out. So I'm gonna put a little extra in there. And our final wet ingredient is lemon extract. That is of course what turns these into lemon cookies. We need two teaspoons of that. So now that we have some more liquid ingredients in here, this mixer should be able to handle it a little bit better. So let's give it a whirl. Definitely wanna scrape down the sides of the bowl as needed to make sure that everything gets evenly incorporated. Mm, that lemon smell is really good. So we're gonna give this another little mix here. So we've got our wet ingredients all mixed up. We are going to set those to the side and mix up our dry ingredients in a separate bowl here. So hopefully this bowl is big enough since we're doubling this recipe, we'll find out. We are first going to need six cups of flour. Okay, so here's our six cups of flour. We are going to have to mix pretty carefully, but I think we can do it. So to this flour, we are going to need to add two tablespoons of baking powder. And a pinch of salt, that's pretty vague. I'm just gonna add about that much. 
Now, we are going to very carefully whisk this up. I've definitely made a cloud of flour in my kitchen more than once. And you can tell we're kind of just scraping by here this holiday season. I mean, I um, am missing my stand mixer paddle. My regular mixer is kind of falling apart a little bit and half the bowls are dirty. So despite all of that, we will triumph and these cookies will be delicious. All right, so our dry ingredients are blended. We are going to add them probably in about two batches into this bowl and mix that up together. So let's grab about half of this or so. I'm thinking we are going to need to moisten this with a spoon first to avoid a flour explosion. Actually, you know, this first section of flour feels wet enough that I think I can just do it with a whisk. All right, that looks pretty good, I think. So let's get the rest of our flour added in. Now the directions do say that this will be a sticky dough which is my experience. Right, let's mix this up again. Once we get this moistened a little bit, we'll switch back to the hand mixer because I think it will do a more thorough job than I can do with the spoon. All right, so our dough is completed. Our oven has preheated to 350 degrees. So now we are going to take spoonfuls of this and we are going to put it onto our cookie sheet, which I have lined with a silicone baking mat. You can use parchment paper if you don't have that. Now this dough is really sticky. You're not going to really be able to roll it out. So you just want to kind of take spoonfuls. The size depends, of course, on the size of the cookie you want. I'm making these for a cookie swap, so I want to make sure that I have a good amount. So I'm not going to be too generous with each individual cookie. But you can see, I've got plenty of batter, so I think this will be fine. Now, of course, I'm just trying to move this guy over a little bit. I put him, I didn't place him very well. Of course, as with most cookies that you make, you want to leave a couple inches between these because they will spread out and expand while they cook. So the recipe says to put these out in about tablespoon size drops. I'm not really measuring, I'm just kind of estimating. You just wanna to try to make sure that they're all roughly the same size so that they cook about the same amount of time. You may notice that I am not doing all that good of a job of making sure they're the same size, but I think it'll still be fine. So let's see, I think we'll be able to get, that guy's a little small, we'll add a little more to that one. So I think I should be able to get about 15 on this cookie sheet. So here we go. These will smooth out a little bit as they cook. I know they look kind of wild and crazy right now, but that's okay. So the recipe says to cook these at 350 degrees for between eight to 10 minutes. I'm going to set my timer for seven minutes and check on them. I will show you what they look like when they're done. So our first batch of cookies just came out. You can see how they smoothed out quite a bit in the oven. They don't look all crazy anymore. Now these cookies, I will say, are a little bit tricky to tell when they're done because I like to pull them out before the edges really start to brown. But if you look, you can see there's kind of little holes that appear on the top when it starts to really be done. I don't know, that's kind of how I tell. A lot of it is personal preference too because I like my cookies to be a little bit softer, a little bit chewier. If you want them to be a little bit crunchier, then go ahead and wait until the edges just barely start to brown and pull them out then. So I'm gonna let these cookies cool for a couple minutes. I'm going to put them on a cooling rack. I'm just gonna keep baking up the rest of our cookies and I will meet you back here once the cookies are baked and I will show you how to make the delicious lemon glaze. That is what really makes these cookies really good. So I realized I forgot to tell you guys how long I cooked these. That's kind of important. I ended up cooking these for eight minutes. But again, the time that you cook them might vary a little bit depending on your oven. But here, eight minutes was perfect. So we have all our cookies baked. We have plenty of cookies. I have them spread out on a bunch of different plates because we need them in a single layer in order to glaze them. 
So now I'm gonna show you guys how to make the glaze really quickly. It's super easy and simple, and it definitely is the perfect finishing touch for these cookies. So this glaze is really simple. You're just going to need powdered sugar, water, and lemon extract. Now, despite the fact that we doubled this cookie recipe, I'm going to start with just a single recipe of the glaze. I am pretty sure that I will have to make extra of this glaze as well, but we're gonna start with just a single recipe because it's a little more manageable and easier to work with, and then we'll just whip up a second batch later. This glaze is so easy that making a second batch of it later is really no trouble. So we are first going to start with two cups of powdered sugar. So let's add two cups of powdered sugar right into our little bowl here. I just wanted to work with this small little bowl right now, which, oh man, I'm making a mess. Anyway, I just wanted to work with a small little bowl right now. So that is one of the reasons why we're starting with just a single batch of this glaze. So I'm going to measure out three tablespoons of water and add it to this. Now to that, we are going to add one teaspoon of lemon extract. I have here a half teaspoon, so we're gonna put two of these in. Then we're just gonna go ahead and mix this up. And that is as simple as it gets. Now you just want to take a look at the consistency of your glaze. If you want it to be a little bit thicker, you're going to add more sugar. A little thinner, you're obviously going to add more water. Now what I find is that it usually starts out pretty thin. I let the cookies sit for a little while and let the glaze kind of harden. Once they've hardened for a little while, then you'll be able to stack them. But obviously you want to let it harden first, otherwise you're gonna end up with just a big sticky mess. So that's why I have my cookies all set up on a single layer in the plates. So we're gonna work with one plate at a time and we're just going to glaze these cookies. Now, if you want to take your cookies and just dip them in the glaze a little bit, you can. I just usually take a spoon and just kind of spread a little bit on top, just like that. And there, just like that, adds a little bit of sweetness, adds a little bit of extra lemon flavor. These cookies do have a mild lemon flavor themselves, but honestly, a lot of the lemoniness really comes from the cookies. Now, just a word to the wise, these are going to be messy and drip everywhere, as you can see. So just be prepared to either have them in a place where they can be contained or where you're okay with cleaning up a little bit of a mess. So see, and this is just how beautiful they look once they're done being glazed. These are delicious and so lemony. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and making one of my favorite Christmas cookies. These I think are my son's all time favorite of all the Christmas cookies that we make every year and everyone in my family really likes them. Now I am also requested every year to make these specific cookies for the cookie swap that I go to. So these are just a very popular cookie in general. So I definitely recommend giving these a try. That nice bright citrus flavor is just so good, especially kind of as a contrast to a lot of the really rich flavors that you get this time of year. So these are great cookies. They're really easy. They cook up really well, it makes a lot. So this is a great option, especially to feed a crowd. So I hope you guys have been enjoying baking cookies with me all week. I hope that you will check back tomorrow because I do have one more really delicious cookie recipe for you guys. Until then, I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.